Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show today. We're talking about some common problems with tomato diseases and how to fix them. As well as alternatives to chemical fertilizers. And we have landscape expert, perennial expert, author Bobby Schwartz on the program. Plus your garden questions. It all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. So glad you've taken a little time out of your day to join us on the program. Whether you're listening in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, and in California, or anywhere in between via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, your radio, through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the radio tab, podcast replay, or in-studio video replay. Thank you for much. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, where there's over 1,400 garden videos now, short and long format, as well as replays of this show in podcast and in-studio form. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in USA. We offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the right size that fits your project at powerplanter.com we love to hear you uh, and your comments and your questions and you can do that in a variety of different ways and they all revolve around the iview organics 3 one plant guard hotline iview organic 3 one plant guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees Shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivorganics.com 301 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the instant access ivorganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. For use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVGshow. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. There is still time for you to win a weed dragon or mini dragon. Uh, if you want more details on that, that is a chemical-free way of removing weeds via flaming using a propane wand. Uh, propane torch, uh, propane tanks not included. You can still find that information at the top of the page at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Dot com. We'll be uh, doing that till the end of May, and yep. then we'll be announcing... Some restrictions apply, and details for entering uh, are there. No purchase necessary. Tomatoes are the most common vegetables in which people grow. Uh, There are some individuals whom I know that do not care for or like tomatoes, but I am still friends with them. Some people only grow tomatoes, like they might grow a bunch of flowers, and then they grow tomatoes because they just love that homegrown tomato taste. And there are about 4,300 different diseases or problems your tomato plant can have. We're going to cover about seven of the most common diseases and the, the ones that we have dealt with and how you can reduce re, uh, re, uh, and remove or prevent these problems from occurring. Right. So early blight, this is a very common problem now. Early blight occurs, um, or you know you have early blight because your tomato plants start to yellow, typically the leaves, the at, leaves the, yeah. at the bottom, and then it spreads through the top of your plant by the time it's ready to harvest you have just like a yellow stalk with tomatoes growing on it it is in everybody's soil right there's good things and bad things in your soil and early blight is one of the bad things in your soil it's in everybody's soil no matter what you do to your soil it's still there we and you you hear people on on the you know internet videos oh I, i've moved my tomatoes to prevent early blight that uh, that's that's not the actual Right. Provincial me- mechanism ask, here. Ask for like resistant varieties of tomatoes. But you don't have to worry about that because we're going to give you some things to, to work with here. It's a three step process. A three step process. T- step one <laughs> you need 
to get whole grain cornmeal. So it has to be yellow. So yellow whole grain cornmeal. So think, okay, there's the cheapo stuff. You want to step it up a bit and get the yellow whole grain cornmeal. And what you want to do at the time of planting is you take a handful of it after you've planted the tomato and just put it around the base of the plant. If the tomato is already currently in the ground, you can go ahead out in the garden right now after the program's over and uh, take one handful and just sprinkle around the base of the tomato plant. And I know this sounds crazy, but it works. Uh, We've had a number of people over the last four years come up to us since we've been instructing this particular aspect of tomato disease prevention and saying, I thought you guys were crazy. I didn't think it would work, but I have have had the best tomatoes I've ever had since using the tomato, uh, the the whole grain cornmeal tip uh, putting around the base. Now you can also reapply. We reapply about the middle of the growing season just to add a little more punch to that uh, trichoderma to fight that early blight uh, disease that's in the soil. Mm-hmm. That's step one, the now whole s- green corn meal. Yeah, step step two. two is you're going to mulch around your tomatoes. You can mulch around your whole garden, but mulching around p- plants that are susceptible to diseases like tomatoes is good. This allows the less of the water to splash up, less of the soil to splash up. We use things like leaves. You can use uh, straw. You can use pine straw, pine needles, pine straw, whatever you want to call it, or chemical and weed seed free grass clippings. So if it's been a while since you cut your grass and they're full of weed seeds, don't add those to your garden. Or if you spray or somebody else sprays your lawn, you don't want to add those grass clippings. But if it's just your regular straight long grass clippings, let them dry and those make a great mulch. You, uh, two, three, four inches, a barrier prevention mechanism in order to prevent the soil from splashing up on the leaves. And step number three in the early blight disease prevention uh <laughs> Try, try, uh, try, trifecta here. Trifecta, the program. Yeah. With this simple, easy program. So this is Joey's. This is Joey's job. He what he does is he prunes the bottom portion of the tomato, four, five, six inches, six to eight inches. Um, not right away, but when you plant your tomatoes, you do want to to trim them. He does this. Twice? Every three weeks. Every three weeks. Why am I telling them this? It's your job. Every three weeks throughout the growing season, I'll go through and we plant about 110 tomatoes, and I trim the bottom six to eight inches from a soil level up the plant, leaving the stalk alone, but removing any of the foliage and or canopy pieces that are potentially have the opportunity to have soil splashing up on them. If the canopy, if there's a limb that's leaning, I'll cut it in half. Uh, It doesn't hurt the plant to do this. And we want to take those clippings and throw them away because there are some diseases that are on those leaves. So don't burn them. Don't put them in your compost. Don't put them on the street for the city. Put them directly into your Even with the heavy mulching that we do, there is still some splash up that does occur and other diseases. So we want to keep that clean as well as the mulch and the whole grain corn meal. Now, if you've mulched, Uh, and you're halfway through the season, you're going to apply the whole grain cornmeal, you can pull back the mulch a little bit, throw it on the ground, cover it back up um, on that. So another problem we're going to talk about is blossom end rot. The discoloration of the bottom of the fruit as it develops, and then you have a red tomato or purple tomato, whatever the case is, and it's all rotten and black on the bottom of the uh, fruit. Right, so this is not a technically a pest or disease is a a physiological problem but this occurs for a lot of people so that's why we wanted to talk about it and what happens is that this is because of a lack of access your plant is having a lack of access to calcium in the soil so a lot of people will think oh i have blossom end rot you know somebody told me to spray to put magnesium sulfate or epsom salt around the base of my plant and water it in and a lot of people think this helps the blossom end rot but what's going on is that your soil is super dry, your plant doesn't have access to the calcium in the soil, so you water your plants in that process, and then all of a sudden the plants are okay, but that's because you gave your plants access to calcium again. Yeah, the calcium is locked up in the soil, un- unaccessible to the plant because the soil is so dry. We water, it releases that available calcium for the plant to uptake. Simple as that. So continue to water on a regular basis. You want your garden soil to be the consistency of a damp sponge. Not soggy, not super dry, but a damp sponge. Now, the upper levels of the soil uh, web, a couple of the inch or two on the top of the soil and down, is going to be a different moisture consistency than the two or three inches below that where the typical root system of a tomato plant would be. So you can kind of gauge and experiment and take a trial out there and dig and see, okay, I'm three inches down. This is what the moisture consistency is. 
Additionally, with that and watering, the mulch application will also reduce the amount of evaporation in the soil, which will allow the plants to uptake more calcium when it's required because it's not so dry, it's locked out. So the benefit of the mulch is twofold. One, to prevent the soil splash up, and two, to hold the moisture in, less watering, more available calcium for the plant to pick up, or the necessary nutrients overall. Because it's not just the calcium that gets locked out. There's other nutrients that when the soil is completely dry, the plant can't access any of it because there's no moisture to transmit it from soil to plant, the roots and up the stalk. Right. So our next one is bacterial spot. This is not something that we see or we have seen, but a lot of people do do seem to get it. Um, this is something that is kind of like early blight. It lives in your soil, but it affects your plants. So what you would want to do what's is... The, what's the... Uh, I mean, it affect, affects your fruit. Yeah, what's the visual sign? What are we looking at if we th- have had or might have? It kind of looks like um, late blight a little bit, but it's like it's like spottiness on like large spots, okay. dark spots. So for people who are not familiar with what late blight is, on the fruit, act, on the actual, let's say it's a red tomato, because many people grow red tomatoes, it's as if somebody came in with a black magic marker and kind of put stripes and dots... On that, is that kind of what we're visualizing of what it may occur? Right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe brown. Brown. Yeah. But it, blotchiness on the fruit and, itself. Right. And it's usually this occurs when your tomato is ready, basically ready to harvest. Okay. So this lives in your soil as well. Um, so this is in areas where maybe like Florida, where you get this really heavy rain, pounding rain, and this soil splashing up literally onto your tomatoes themselves. So the fruit it itself is where the, the yeah. soil is splashing up on this and, and uh, emitting the bacteria that's in the soil and it's laying on the fruit portion, not the leaves. Right. Okay. So this wouldn't happen so much for us in the Midwest because we don't get that super well, heavy rain. I hope not. I hope not. Who knows at these this point anymore. Uh, but, but what, what, what you can do is you can mulch. You can here. mulch. Okay. You don't want to eat that fruit. But you can mulch, and this is going to... Mulching helps a lot of problems in the garden. Yeah. Um, so then there's, on the other side of that, there's something called bacterial speck. Now, this mo- looks more like somebody took a paintbrush with brown paint on it and flicked it at the tomato, so it's like brown little specks. And this is something like... It's kind of like late blight, um, but it comes... Because it, it, it's something you don't want... Definitely don't want to eat. You want to remove the plants and trash them. Um, if you grow in containers, you want to make sure you wash those containers with... Soapy water, hot soapy water. Um, but this can come from garden centers and nurseries. So if you buy your starts, I, I mean, it can happen, and there's nothing they can do about it because it'll just, it's a, it'll it, just be it in that. It transmits to the soil? It'll, yeah, it'll okay. just be in that soil for that year. So that's why you would just want to make sure that if you got those plants from the garden center, you, have, you just have to let it go. But if you if don't keep the little thing, the little seedling holders or the, something the, like that. The cups. Yeah. So here, here, here throws another um, piece of advice. Always buy from a reputable garden center because these garden centers, if it's just blah blah garden center that popped up, they, their their goal is to move the plants, make the money, disappear. If it's a reputable garden center, most com- they understand the whole process, the chain of events. Uh, so what- right, it's going to come from the pop up ones, randos, and then it's going to come from, to be honest, the big box stores. So. Stores that sell other things, and then they just happen to have a garden center. For two weeks a year. and, right, and nobody. however long. Uh, so lastly, let's talk about late blight, because we've mentioned that multiple times. And, and if you're not familiar with late blight, what that is, a airborne pathogen or, or bacteria, I guess, is there, what, what's the correct terminology? Sure. So late blight is an air, airborne pathogen. Okay. It's a fungal airborne spores that travel through the air. And it'll it'll affect like a whole county. This is later on in the season, right? So is this is going to be like October, November. So if you're like us in the Midwest, we're pretty much done with tomatoes at that point. Um, so you just rip the plants out, throw them in the trash, and um, don't eat any any of the tomatoes. It, you'll see a blotchiness on the fruit. It'll be yeah, and like, it's like, almost like a like a like you put a torch to it and it's scabbed over, mm-hmm. as well as brown and black blotches on the leaves, as well as the stem. Uh, like like Holly said, you don't want to eat the fruit. Even if the fruit doesn't look infected, harvest it, let it sit for two or three days. That will begin to form on the skin, as well as get rid of it. Uh, if, this, if you throw it in your compost pile, if you put it in the city for pickup, uh, or you, uh, and those spores 
obviously in a compost pile. You want the compost to be hot enough to break down the, the, the plant material. Those spores stay warm enough over the winter. Those spores can be introduced back in the garden much earlier in the year, and you'll have the problem much, much sooner. So just get rid of it. If you're in a cold climate like the upper Midwest uh, and you leave a few plants, a few fruits or leaves in the garden, the coldness will kill the spores so you don't have to worry about transmitting it to the next year's garden. Warmer climates, uh, you want to clean everything out of the garden as best you can and it will, you'll reduce it to almost non-existent issues uh, for, uh, for that for the following year. So that's just some of the multitude of different tomato diseases in which you have uh you you may get you'll get several of them uh we've done we've gotten uh, about half of what we've spoke about and hopefully you don't have the other half but when we come back do you use fertilizer do you use chemical fertilizer or organic fertilizer we'll give you some alternatives to chemical fertilizer you're listening to wisconsin vegetable garden radio show do not go anywhere Question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food, a fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system, solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems raised garden bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fund to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your eco garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway. Any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping. A $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Don't let your tomatoes lay down. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products. From plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides. Organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Tomatoes need to be caged, staked, or tied up off the ground. When you allow your tomatoes to lay on the ground to ripen, you lose 50% of overall yield due to the crop rotting on the ground and insects eating them. 
So whatever you do, get them up off the ground so you can increase your tomato harvest. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Pharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit pharmaceuticals.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through cutting-edge, natural, organic, garden-friendly products based on research and innovation. After 28 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizers, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. Dr. Earth is a great product in which you can use for uh, use for your garden. It's an organic fertilizer. Uh, we're going to talk about alternatives to chemical fertilizers. Now, before we get started into that conversation, let's define what the difference between a chemical fertilizer and an organic fertilizer is. Right. So organic fertilizers are... Uh, derived from animal matter, so like manure. Um, they can be derived from vegetable matter, like a leaf compost, or bone meal are derived directly from the plants or animal sources. Um, sometimes they're from things like peat, manure, something called slurry, or guano. So it's typically going to be an animal. Or sometimes, or sometimes a human. A, a human. Yeah, there are, chemi- there yeah. are fertilizers mm-hmm. that are, but not necessarily organic right. in some instances. Or plants. Yes. So, or... Uh, any combination of it. Okay, so what's an inorganic uh, or chemical-based fertilizer? Sure, so inorganic fertilizers are usually typically what are called commercial fertilizers or inorganic um, or not commercial. What's the other one? Chem- uh, conventional. Conventional. Um, so these occurs from things like mined nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Um, they can be made from ammonia. They could be made from any combination of some sort of non-organic matter. So these are ones that are developed um, by humans in a chem- chemi- chemistry situation, um, and they're made from different combinations of these chemicals. So uh, there are people that only and uh, encourage, and we are one of them, to encourage to use organic fertilizers. And there are individuals that 
uh, also preach the, you can use organic, you can use chemical, it really doesn't matter, the soil can't tell, the plants can't tell, you can do a little bit of both, it's okay. Right, okay, so here's the deal. Um, organic fertilizers are are used to encourage your plants to grow naturally, more or less, and it's going to build your soil. So that's one one thing. Chemical fertilizers typically allow your plants to uptake what they need, but it doesn't build your soil. It just makes your plant reliable. So if you keep using a chemical fertilizer or a conventional or an inorganic, your plant becomes dependent on that. So if you don't give your plant that what we call plant crack every like two weeks, your plant's going to not do so well. So the advantage to growing organically, building your soil, it kind of goes hand in hand. So you're going to build your soil, you're going to use organic fertilizer, you're going to have nice, healthy, active living soil, and then your plants are going to do better because of that. With the organic fertilizer, we're somewhat mimicking what nature does because nature drops the leaves on the forest floor, breaks down, feeds the, the plant life and the microbial life in an organic, natural means. That's correct. Okay. Right. So yeah, we are we're working in, in harmony with the ecosystem in our backyard or as best we can. As best we can. Yeah. Yes. Um to help our plants do to be healthy, strong plants. So what what are some alternatives to chemical fertilizers uh if we choose to do uh if we get Dr. Earth as well as if we go and uh look for other means that we can use in our garden? I just do want to mention them. Okay. If you're adding, one thing you can add is you can add animal manure, animal waste. Um, So when you do this, you want to make sure, A, that it has aged. Because if you add non-composted manure, it has generally a high salt content. um, And then also it generally has a high nitrogen content. And that would burn your plants, essentially. So what you want to do is you want to make sure whatever manure you use that is aged, you want to know where that manure comes from. Um, So just going down the street or... Free maybe, manure, free manure, maybe, come pick yeah, it up. Yeah. Maybe f- really far down the street to Farmer Bob's, you know, come pick up my manure. You don't know what, what occurred there. So aged, and you also want to know where it comes from because there's a persistent herbicide called Grazon that's fed to horses and cows. And what this does is it helps kill off broadleaf things like thistles, makes the grass okay to grow, and then the cow or horse eats that. It goes through the digestive system, manure ages, it's still persistent, and it's going to kill your plants. So you want to make sure you know your source of where your manure or whatever is coming from. So that being said, and also I want, to, I want you to bear in mind that non-organic um, fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, conventional, whatever you want to call them, are made to be soluble, water-soluble. So that means that it flushes through your soil faster, and that's why you have to keep applying it. And that also is one of the main causes for algae bloom and um, the dead zone. Uh, and this is agricultural wise as well as convi- as well as urban wise uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Right, so, so alternatives: worm castings. Worm castings. Worm castings are worm poop. Yeah, you can buy those at your local garden center. You can do your own homemade compost. Soil conditioners. Right. So Soil Diva, she sells a soil conditioner. It's a liquid microbial stimulant spray that improves your soil health. So it just it just encourages your soil to be better essentially it's going to help it break down things better it's going to include the growth of the good bacteria in your soil it's not going to be harmful to worms it's going to help your soil retain moisture better so it's a soil conditioner um so it helps with the plants you work hard to grow compost tea there's lots of recipes for compost tea you can buy compost tea bags there's all sorts of stuff coffee grounds coffee grounds are two percent nitrogen by by weight so if you use coffee grounds you're not going to over nitrogen your soil but you want to mix them in you don't want to leave them at the top and um, because if you mix them in, if you don't, if you just broadcast them, you're, the, they're not, they're not going to absorb that nitrogen. The, the nitrogen will evaporate into the atmosphere. Right. Uh, they also contain a tad bit of potassium and a tad bit of, of phosphorus. Um, but it's a great organic matter uh, for your plant, for your garden. It helps build a lot of the microbial, it feeds a lot of the microbial life. Worms uh, digest it and uh, maneuver, maneuver it through the soil. In the first segment, we talked about weed-free, seed-free grass clippings, dry grass clippings. Those are great to add to your soil. They use as mulch. Uh, up to, uh, what, 4 or 5 percent nitrogen? Uh, right. uh, now, what we do is we dry them out and put them on top. Now, you can mix them in, but you would have, you know, there's a little compost breakdown process that occurs. Um, but that is a very beneficial aspect to increasing the fertility of your soil uh, by not using chemical fertilizers. So there's a lot of different alternatives instead of using chemical fertilizers um, 
uh, when it comes here's to... A, here's a fun fact for you, and you can do this with your kids or yourself. Banana peels typically break down in the soil in 30 days. Okay. So you could go out, bury a banana peel, and uh, and then check on it in 30 days and see what happened. And that adds a little bit that of... That adds a lot of, thi- a lot of things. It's organic matter to your soil. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, alternatives to chemical fertilizer. Uh, what el- what you can use also is phylum bioproducts to help control some of the insects in your yard and your uh, little ecosystem. Yeah, you're looking to control those insects like Japanese beetles, weevils, borers, various beetles like the bad beetles and their larvae without harming the good insects. Phylum bioproducts does just that with potent, <coughs> excuse me, with potent. Uh, powerful enough to control these and unlike chemical products phylum's line of products do not risk a pose pose a risk to beneficial insects nope. such as bees butterflies and other pollinators that exist with chemical products therefore you can now achieve control rates that you expect from the chemical insecticides without doing harm to the rest of the environment visit phylum bioproducts.com that's p-h-y-l-l-o-m bioproducts.com don't go anywhere when we come back Landscape architect and perennial gardener Bobby Schwartz will be with us to enlighten us how we can increase the beauty of our garden and our yard. Do not go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight-line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. New, new natural healing ointment, USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it. Tomatosnaps.com. World's coolest rain gauge.com. Need I say more? Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 Planting Tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Dig perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural, liquid, biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at SoilDiva.net. Have you ever been to a farmer's market? If not, you're missing out. There's more than just vegetables at a farmer's market. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Farmer's markets are popping up all over the country. And they're not always just a few tables with vegetables on them to be sold. There's a lot of different items one can purchase at a farmer's market and see, such as homemade bread, barbecue, honey, as well as crafts. Sometimes farmer's markets will have entertainment from a local band and activities for kids. If nothing else, it's a great 
atmosphere in which one can go and take in the sights, even if you choose not to purchase something. Some advice that I would offer you when going to a farmer's market is don't just buy the first beets that you see. For example, walk around, see what all the vendors have to offer. Now their pricing is all going to be within a few quarters of each other, but at least you can see what they have to offer. Get there early. That's when the freshest and the most available produce is on the tables. But you can also make a deal whenever the farmer's market is about to close because the farmers do not want to take this produce home. It's been harvested that morning or the night before. Their job is to get rid of it because when they take it back home, most of the time it's not going to be used for anything but personal use or it may just get thrown in the compost pile. So if you've never gone to a farmer's market, do some research and see where one is near you. Visit it and take in the environment and the atmosphere. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com with over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B-O-B-B. EX.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. We always appreciate you tuning into our program, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, to help and inform you of what's going on in your garden. But also, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center has a knowledgeable staff in which they can tell you and advise you on what's wrong with your garden. And if you bring pictures or samples in a closed container, they can identify the problem much easier. They have all your landscaping needs, bulk material. They have a very knowledgeable staff, and they have a lot of your planting materials now. It's planting time. You can find all of this, plus the Bloom Coffee Shop and a fun playground for your kids at 4930 West Lemus Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton. You can call 414-282-4220 or go to bluemills.com. to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. And, and you're absolutely right about the tomatoes. Next to a very good woman, tomatoes come in a close second. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Alpaisa Hawk is an obsessive gardener who is inaccessibly knowledgeable of passionate about gardens, their design, creation, and... Uh, purpose in daily life. This definition characterizes Bobby Schwartz. She is the proprietress of Bobby's Green Thumb, which is a year-round Cleveland landscape and garden design business that focuses on landscape consult- consultation, design installation and maintenance, garden coaching, lecturing, and writing. Welcome to the program, Bobby. Well, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us on the program. Now, I want to ask you, um, you do a lot of perennial gardening. What is yep. what is perennial? Uh, a perennial garden, and uh, w- if someone is new to perennial gardening, what is something that uh, y- they need to consider before they just go to the garden center and buy a bunch of plants? Because everybody goes there and it's pretty and grab grab plant. Uh, I know where I think I know what I want to do with this. What's what's some advice you would off- offer them? Okay, what I would say is before you go shopping, be aware of the site where you want to plant. How much light, how much sunlight is there? What is the moisture level in the soil? What is the drainage like? What is the height of the plant or plants that you want to buy? And how much maintenance will they need? You need to take all of those factors into consideration before you decide what to buy. You also want to think about the colors that you like, what colors will go together, what colors will complement your house. Um, Think about the colors that you use inside your house. 
Think about the colors that you wear uh, because these are obviously the colors that you like. And if you can tie what you do outside to what you have inside, then there's a real unity of feeling when you come, when you approach the house or vice versa when you look out the window. That's uh, that's a that's a really good point. Now, annual gardeners, uh, annual flower gardeners, are used to having instant gratification in terms of flowers looking pretty. You know, we plant those flowers. We go to the garden center; they're in bloom. We plant those fo- flowers. We take care of them, and they look nice until the frost or whatever. What What are some things that people who may want to grow perennials? Is there a timeline as to things will, when things will fill in and look nice? When can they expect their uh, their color gratification or their beautiful, beauty-looking, nice plants. Okay, so if you're planning to buy perennials, you need to have patience. Uh, Sometimes they will be in flower when you purchase them, not always. Um, But generally speaking, it takes at least two to three years for a perennial to mature. In other words, for it to grow to its full height, for the root system to reach out and fulfill its potential uh, diameter, basically. So frequently when you put in perennials, uh, perennial garden, it looks somewhat bare. And you're thinking, this isn't what I envisioned. But what you have to do is plant far enough apart to allow room for the plant to grow and mature, If you can't stand the bare spaces while you're waiting for that to happen, you can plant some annuals in between so that it looks fuller, it's more satisfying in the meantime. But you do want to plant far enough apart so that you're not making future maintenance for yourself. What are some common uh, perennial maintenance uh, care that we need to follow? I know that some people will deadhead, some people will divide uh, uh, plants. What are some uh, things that we need to be aware of uh, or some care tips that would be kind of universal? Sure. Uh, I would say the most common maintenance chore for perennials is deadheading, and that's to encourage rebloom. Now, Coreopsis is a really good example uh, because there are two types of Coreopsis. There is thread leaf Coreopsis, which is Coreopsis verticillata. And it has very tiny leaves, very thin, and it will spread relatively rapidly. And you can shear back the blossoms um, after they have finished blooming and then you will get another flush of bloom. In a normal growing season, you can get three flushes of bloom, one in June, one in mid-July, another in September. With Coreopsis grandiflora, the leaves are bigger, and this Coreopsis is a clumper rather than a runner. And if you try to shear this Coreopsis after it blooms, What you end up with are stems um, that just look unsightly. And so you really have to prune each stem as you deadhead it. So it's much more time consuming if you grow the clumping Coreopsis rather than the spreading Coreopsis. Another is staking, um, which is a real pain in the butt. And usually you end up looking at the stakes, which are not beautiful. Peonies would be a good example, but there is a wonderful product on the market that you can purchase called a grow-through. And basically it is a metal ring with a grid in the middle of it. The heads, which is what these grids are called, um, come in different sizes. And you can also buy different height legs, which attach. For a peony, I would normally buy a 24-inch ring with probably two to two and a half feet tall legs because you are going to push them into the ground. And the thing to do is to install these grow-throughs just as the peony is starting to emerge from the soil. And you push it way down close to the soil. 
And then as the peony shoots come up through the grid, gradually as the stems um, get higher, you start pulling the growth through up, and the leaves will totally hide it. You won't even see them, but they hold the peonies. The heads get very heavy when they're wet, so it holds them up so they're not touching the ground or falling over and taking up too much space. And then in the fall, when you cut them back, don't take the growth root out of the ground because what usually happens is you don't remember until it's too late to put it back in. So just push it all the way down to the ground for the winter, and then the cycle will start over again in the spring. There are other perennials which you can use linking stakes if they tend to fall over. Um, Things like, oh, say, delphinium or aconitum or veronicastrum, if they're basically perennials that are somewhat tall with somewhat weak stems. Those you can stake individually, but um, you have to think about how much time do you want to spend doing this. With ornamental grasses, they're very low maintenance. You basically just cut them to the ground in the spring and you're done. Uh, the exception are two of the blue grasses, the blue fescues and halictotrecon. Uh, the common name is escaping me. These two grasses you never cut to the ground. You just put on gloves and long sleeves and you run your fingers through the foliage and it will bring out the dead leaves. But that's the basic maintenance for perennials. Okay. So you have a three-step plan for designing a lovely landscape. What is what is that three-step plan? Number one, um, you need to set your goals, your priorities, and your budget. Then you need to evaluate what you have. What is there that you love and you want to keep? What is there that you feel may be in the wrong place? Can you transplant it? What is there that may have gotten too large for the space? Is it possible to prune it? Or does it need to be transplanted? Or is it in such bad shape that it needs to be discarded? Now that's for plants. For hardscape, which is basically anything that's not living. If so a sidewalk, a driveway, a patio, steps. First you want to look at safety, then you want to look at beauty, and then you want to look at adequacy. For instance, a lot of sidewalks are so narrow that two people cannot walk side by side. And I would advise um, widening sidewalks so that they're more comfortable. Look at the material. A lot of times they're straight, and if you're going to change them, you might think about redesigning um, the line. It could be curvilinear, which will slow people down so that they can see what's on either side. Um, it also slows people down, and that makes it more safe because they're walking more slowly rather than hurrying, for instance, to the front door. And then you need to decide on what level of maintenance, both hardscape and garden, are you comfortable with? How much time do you have to devote to this? How much time do you want to have? With a lot of plants, you can choose ones that have lower levels of maintenance. So there's a lot of reading involved, um, or you may decide to call in a professional landscape designer to help you with that, with those decisions. And I think that's the key here, uh, Bobby, is uh, maintenance and knowledge of what you're wanting to do and the time that it takes, and then that kind of determines 
is this something you really want to get into? Absolutely. I mean, I have been gardening for nearly 50 years, and I've been designing for 43. So in all that time, I've done a lot of trialing of plants in my garden, um, a lot of experimenting, because one of the things that people don't realize is that plants do not read the books. (laughs) So sometimes they will grow taller, wider. Um, They need more light than the book says. A lot of plant labels say that a plant can grow in full sun or partial shade. The problem with the partial shade on those kinds of labels is that frequently the plant will lean toward the sun so that it's not as upright as it's supposed to be. Um, Sometimes it can be more of a problem than you have any idea. For instance, I once bought a little creeping Veronica to put between um, pavers on a path through my garden, and I thought it would just stay right there. Well, I was totally wrong. It started creeping everywhere, Um, and the roots were thick, so it was starting to crowd out plants that I wanted to keep. So it's been a battle to not only dig it up, but to keep after it because it keeps coming back. Like every year I think I've got it, finally. And then next year, there it is again. So a lot of reading. And, you know, even the most experienced people do make mistakes. That's very true. Where can we find more about your books and your lectures and how to get a hold of you? Well, my website would be the very best place, www.clevelandlandscapegarden.com. And my website has several different pages. One is about me, one about my business, one about the design process, one about my book, Garden Renovation, Transform Your Yard into the Garden of Your Dreams, And it is available at independent bookstores and from Amazon. Um, And then there's another page about lectures and workshops that I give. Uh, In the past year and a half since the book came out, I've been traveling all over the country and to Canada to talk about the book and give several lectures. And it's been a load of fun. I have met so many wonderful people. And what makes me feel even better is that a lot of them already have my book and they tell me what a difference it has made because there are so many people who know that they want to make changes in their landscape but they just don't know where to start and the book takes you through the process there are about 275 photographs in the book to illustrate everything that I'm talking about And I've taken them over the past 40 years in virtually every state in the United States, all over Europe, in Canada, even a few in Mexico. But the whole point is for people to understand what I'm talking about and see a photo that says, this is what she means. Because I think photos are much easier for people to understand than text. Very, very true. Well, Bobby, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us in the program and sharing a lot of your knowledge with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's all your questions and our garden answers right after this. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com 
Do you want fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood? Check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Find out where to pick up quality produce at tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful, tasty peaches and juicy, sweet blueberries. If you're tired of the non-taste peaches and the bad blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. To find locations and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They're in Iowa. Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. Tree-Ripe.com is your go-to place for the freshest produce around. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good health homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414-278-7878, and online at beansandbarley.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the backbreaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. Com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. I plant my peppers when the soil temperature has reached 70 degrees. Should I put a row cover on them? If so, what light transmission should I get? And if so, do I keep the row cover on all summer, or how do I know when to take it off? Best uh, advice I can give you is wait until the soil temperature reaches 70 degrees. Uh, then you can go ahead and plant your, your peppers. We plant them when they're 60, 65 degrees soil temperature. It'll be fine. 
There won't be any issue. There's no need for a road cover. The day and the nighttime temperatures will be warm enough as long uh, as long as you re- it reaches 60 to 65 degrees on the low end. You'll have no issue with your pepper. How can I detour squirrels from getting in my planters without shooting them? It's the worst year that I've ever had. I tried can- cayenne pa- pow- chili powder around the base or in the planter. That didn't phase them. Well, you've got two options. One, you can use, you can actually put a, a chicken wire over the container to prevent them from getting in. Or you can use Bobex. Bobex is an animal deterrent. It's all natural. It doesn't wash off. You don't want to spray it on your edible plants, but you can spray it around the plants and on the containers, and it will help. Help detour the squirrels. Next question from Katie. I want to grow horseradish this year. Do you have any tips? So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local healthcare professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hi, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Katie has a great question. She's going to try planting horseradish this year. And a couple of tips for planting horseradish. First is to work the soil nice and deep. You want it nice and loose because you're trying to grow a root. You don't want to use fresh manure or compost as it's got too much soluble nitrogen in it. And it will make those roots branch and spread too much. You only plant them two to three inches deep even though you're going to work the soil almost a foot deep. Mulch around the top to keep the weeds down. And then after you plant it, you're going to pull up the root when the leaves are 8 to 10 inches tall. Rub off any of the lateral roots that are growing, and you just want to focus on that one main tap root. You're going to do that 6 to 8 weeks later after you've done it the first time. And then harvest them in late October, early November. You'll have a great crop. And then any of the lateral roots that have grown after that second time you've pulled them out, you can keep for next year. That's how you keep the crop growing each year. A horseradish root that's three, four, five years old gets really big leaves on it, but it's going to be so woody you won't be able to use it. So keep them fresh, keep them young, and you'll have a great year. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up next week on the program, same station, same time, tell your garden friends. We're going to talk about 10 insects that you definitely want in your garden. As well as we'll go over what nematodes are, are they beneficial or not, and the purpose or the negative effect they have on your garden. As well as cookbook author Jill Winger will be with us, plus your garden questions. If you miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different options. One, by going to the website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener com and clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page. Uh, you can go to your favorite search engine uh, podcast providing website and search the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener podcast and download an episode there. Or you can go to the highlight tab on the wes- website and uh, search specific topics that we've covered in Season 1, Season 2, and in Season 3. And until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.